Welcome to this presentation on Python. This will be an introduction to Python in the Jupyter Notebooks environment. Python is very exciting for people that are working in data analytics because it has numerous libraries and constructs in order to make analytics easier, better, and deeper. So let's get started. Let's launch the Jupyter Notebook app by going to the Windows dialog box and typing Jupyter. We will launch this app and it will start in a web browser and it will look something like this. So we see the web browser here, we see Jupyter Notebooks, we see lots of folders here and if we want to start writing code we come over here and click New. So we choose Python 3 from the menu and then we're ready to do our first Python program. We type print hello world as you see right here and then we press run. Let's go to Jupyter and open up a Python screen. So I type Jupyter right here, click on it, and it's going to open a page in my web browser, as you can see. I click New, choose Python 3, and I'm ready to write my Python code. It seems very important that the first program you write say Hello World. I've seen it in almost every language. I put my code here, run it, and here it says Hello World. So that's my first Python program and the output here in Jupyter Notebooks. So our second Python program is going to show a list. And here we have 10 famous really good musicians including Chuck Berry, Johnny Cash, Beatles, The Supremes, Elton John, Carpenters, Eagles, Journey, Heart, and Police. And so I have some code here that puts that list into a variable called this list. Then I print this list and I want to get the element that says 1, which is interesting because it's the second element. Chuck Berry is 0, Johnny Cash is 1, Beatles is 2, and so forth. Let's execute this same code in Jupyter Notebook and see how it runs. Notice that here we did number two and it was the third element of the list, Beatles. If we go back, change this to a one, run it again, we'll see that it returns Johnny Cash. So here is the code that's a little bit larger so that you can see and again we set a variable called this list equal to our list of musicians. Notice that each musician has a double quote around it and they're separated with a comma. And notice that the list also has a square bracket right here and a square bracket right here. Then we do a print on the variable this list and if we want to get Johnny Cash we put the number one. So this Python script is going to illustrate data types. Here we set L equal to 42, M equal to 10.3, and N equal to Van Halen. When we print those, we didn't print the values, we printed the data types. So this is how you do it. Let's look at a bigger font here just so that we see it. Again, we do L equal 42, M is set equal to 10.3, N is equal to Van Halen. Let's execute it here in Jupyter and notice that the L variable is an integer because it was 42. The M variable is float because it was 10.3 so it had a decimal point and the N variable is a string because that's Van Halen. So it's an interesting language because we can both declare and initialize a variable with the same statement. Here we're going to work more with data types and show how to convert 
from one data type to another. So we set our L, M, and O variables equal to the values that we saw before. Then we do a conversion. So we see this new variable equals to the float value of L. This B is equal to the integer value of M. And then we have C is equal to complex number. And that's of O. And that's this one J. And J is for complex numbers in Python. When we run this, we're going to get 42, 11, 1 J. And then our new data types are float, int, complex. So here's this code that's a little bit larger. And we can see right here that we declare variables. It sets a data type. And then the way to do a conversion is to do the new data type right here, float of L. So this is an L right here. So here is that code in Python. I will run it. And notice here, I get the 42.0, the 11, which is converted from 11.1, .1, and 1j, which is now complex. And here are the data types that we've converted to. Here is our next Python script. And it is going to make use of date and time. So I import the date time library. I set a variable equal to date time, this variable. And we're taking the date time dot now. So it'll grab that right from your computer. Then I print x dot year and x dot strft ime and this code right here. It comes up with the year 2020 for the first print and Thursday for the second one. So strf time means string from time. So that is a function in Python that can take many, many different parameters. Percent capital A means weekday in the locale's full name. So again, here is our code that will run in Python. Let's execute this code in Python. And notice that it says 2020. So this print x dot year is 2020. And print x dot string from time percent a gives me the day of the week. And it's written Saturday. Here is another variation using date time. So I import the date time library. And I set x equal to, and we're going to make it a date. So it's date time dot date time. And, and here we say which date we want. And this will be June 8th of 2020. Then I print x. That's my variable. And here is what comes out. And that's June 8th, 2020. So remember, if you're going to work with date times, you need to import that library. And you can look up the formats in order to create a date from just simple numbers. Let's execute it here in Jupyter. And notice here that we got the date that we expected in a date time format. Let's further explore some of the parameters in date time. We import the library. We set our x equal to date time dot date time. And it will be the year 2020, July 26th. And I wanted to show several different parameters. So we have a percent B, a percent A, a little Y, a little C, and a little X. And we'll see this, the output showing July for the first print, Sunday for the second, 20th for the third, this long format of a date here. And then 726 of 20. Again, this is the code where we're going to import our library and print each of these with a different parameter. Let's execute this in Jupyter and see it indeed we get the July, the Sunday, the 20, the full date, and then using the slashes. 
So if you look up all the different parameters that you can use with this function, you'll see that you can pretty much get your output any way you'd like. It's important to in any programming language to start learning loops. So here we set m equal to 54. Then I said while m is less than 61 colon print m, m plus equal 1, that's going to increment the value. So here it is just a bit larger and that's how while loops are coded in Python. So let's execute that same code here in Jupyter. I will hit run and notice that it prints the 54, 55, 56, 7, 8, 9, and 60. It doesn't print 61 because it says well m is less than 61. Let's look at a for loop now in Python and Jupyter. So we set teams, that's our variable, equal to a list. And it's going to be Jazz, Lakers, Clippers, Rockets, Thunder, Warriors, Nuggets, Blazers, Spurs, and Maverick. And we have a, a variable A, and we say for A in teams, if A comes up to Nuggets, let's break. Otherwise, print. So we're going to print every team up until we get to Nuggets and then we will quit this loop. Let's run this here in Jupyter, this Python code. We run and notice we have Jazz, Lakers, Clippers, Rockets, Thunder, Warriors. After that it would be the Nuggets but that's what causes the break in our for loop. The next thing we want to do is to read a file that's somewhere on our hard disk and bring it into Python and then we'll calculate some statistics with it. So we're going to read a CSV file. We need to import the pandas library and that will be referenced as PD. Then we have a data frame that we have listed here and that's going to be bringing in a CSV file that's on my hard disk. The CSV file is about fish data and initially I'll just print that. Let's execute this reading a CSV file in Python. We'll run it and notice that it lists each of the columns. It's a species of fish, the weight in grams, the vertical length in centimeters, the diagonal length in centimeters, the cross length in centimeters, the height in centimeters, and the diagonal width in centimeters. So we're reading from a CSV file and we're listing it out. Now unlike on the slide, you can't break the path here into different lines. It won't run. So that'll give us an error. So let's put this back so it reads as one path where that file is and it should run just fine. This is a continuation of the same Python script here with our fish data. This pound sign, just to review, is a comment. and We're going to get some simple statistics from those columns in our CSV file. We set this variable mean1 equal to the data frame. And in the data frame, the column weight in grams, that's the one we're taking. And we want the statistics mean. Sum1 then, this sum digit 1, data frame weight g, and we're looking for the sum. And we get the max, the min, the count, the median, the standard deviation, the variance, and then we're going to group by species and do a count here. Finally, we're going to display each of those measures that we just made. So this is what we're going to print. We print, and then this is a long string right here. We print the word mean weight colon space, and then we add to that, taking the string of mean one because this whole thing is a string. So then we do that for each of the measurements that we just produced. So here is that entire script in Python to read from a CSV and then to calculate and print some statistics. When I run it and I scroll down, it is going to list some of the species and then it is listing all of my statistics. So we get a mean weight, the sum of the weight, the max, the min. I notice that this is zero, so I go look at the raw data and 
one of the fish has no weight listed and it came in as zero. So as I clean the data, I'd probably discard that one uh, so that it doesn't throw off my statistics. It gives me the median, the standard deviation, and the variance. So that's just a nice, easy read a file and get some statistics from it. So this presentation was a nice, easy introduction to Python and Jupyter Notebooks. We didn't go over every last detail of every variation of each loop or function or print, but we did some nice, soft, basic procedures. And then reading a file into Python turns out to be very important. So none of it was particularly hard, but it's easy to get hung up, which is why we made this video. Good luck.